Australian Shane Watts may just be the best off-road wider in the world. In his quest for a second GNCC title, he is faced with a familiar challenger to the crown he won just one year ago. Suzuki's Rodney Smith has returned from injury to capture two wins in the early part of the season. The two-time champ is looking to regain the title he last won in 1999. The showdown is next on Fox Sports Net. This one's the jewel of the sport. The stop everyone looks forward to. The Grand National Cross Country Series visits Loretta Lynn's ranch in Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Myers, joined as always by Fox Sports Net off-road racing analyst Mark Hyde. Mark, the morning races are just finishing behind us, and as we watch them, I tell you, all indications are the pros that will take to the track in very short order are going to provide some excellent entertainment. Yeah, here at Loretta Lynn's, this track has it all. We have some very steep uphills and downhills. We have some river rock sections, and we're talking rocks the size of baseballs that turn into sand whoops like you'd find in Florida. And when you charge through there, your bike just makes all kind of racket and noise. And then on top of that, we get the famous Loretta Lynn's motocross track. This is for the amateur nationals only. And because a lot of the riders here today don't have very good motocross skills, this is the only chance they'll get to see this track. <laughs> I won't tell them that you said that. Meanwhile, our own Bob Walker has become one with the woods. He tells us that the riders might just find themselves between a rock and a hard place. I'm here in Dead Man's Gulch, and they don't call it Dead Man's Gulch for nothing. This area here is probably the gnarliest section of track the riders are going to be dealing with. Dead Man's Gulch has claimed more bikes and more riders over the years than any other track we'll see this year. It is full of trees and full of these big rocks. It's a dried up riverbed, and it changes throughout the years. There's embankments that pop up right in the middle of the track. These riders are going to be coming through here, WFO pinned, sitting back on the bike, wheeling through here, and they don't know what's around the next bend. This area has claimed a lot of riders and a lot of bikes, and we have found something here. We have found what we think are the remains of a former GNCC racer. <laughs> here are the standings going in. Mark, where do you think that bone came from? I don't know, but I hope we don't add to that today. <laughs> I hope not either. Shane Watts with a comfortable margin is out front. Earlier in the program, I mentioned that Mark Hyde is our off-road racing expert. I did not tell you that he's a former GNCC competitor, and he was a darn fast one. Mark, you've ridden this racetrack many, many times, so I would think you would be the best man to tell us who is going to go faster today. Well, I would start off with our defending champion, Shane Watts, from Team KTM. He's won this race two years in a row, and this is very similar to his home country back in Australia. Rodney Smith should be right behind him. Rodney's won this race in the past. And also, too, we have another KTM guy, Mike Lafferty. Mike's won all the National Enduros so far this year. He's been very close to the podium every race, but it seems like right at the end, something comes up and bites him. Well, Mark, there are a couple other riders in that if category. If they didn't have bad luck, they would have no luck at all. Yeah, and leading that category is none other than Suzuki Steve Hatch. Steve is just... Uh, Brake problems, run out of gas, you name it, he's had it. And the guys not too far behind him are Team Green with Freddie Andrews and Paul Edmondson having injuries and bike problems. And Freddie, he led their last race until about five miles from the end before he fell off the bridge. Fred's misfortune was Rodney Smith's gain not only did he win the race, but he gets to talk to Jen Hildreth. All right, I'm here with Rodney Smith. Rodney, it's been a season of ups and downs, two wins, two finishes out of the top five. Have you found a cure for the inconsistency? I sure hope so. You know, my Suzuki's been working really well, and uh, I've got a couple wins under my belt, and the confidence is coming back. And I came off a rough season last year with an injury, and uh, things are turning around. I got a couple of six, like you said, out of the top five, and I'm looking to improve those. Well, you mentioned your injury last year, missing uh, much of the season, including this race. Is it just a victory to be here and be in contention for the title? Yeah, because it definitely brings back memories of sitting home last year when I should have been here racing. And uh, this is always a good race here at Loretta Lynn's. The fans are always good. My Suzuki always works well here, and I'm hoping to uh, turn that around and be on the podium here today. Okay, well, uh, is it too early to worry about Shane Watson championship points? Yeah, you know, I'm not too worried about him. I know he's a great rider. He's a great contendent. And uh, two years ago when I won the championship, he got injured. And last year I got injured. He won the championship. So I think it's kind of a, a rivalry battle between the two of us of who can come out strong. We're both uh, injury-free, so to speak, right now. And uh, this year the GNCCs are counting every event. So it's going to be a long season. 
Okay, well, two-time national champ Rodney Smith looking to be the first one in 2001 to win two in a row. And on the start line, the riders are set to go. There will be a lot of riders that are looking to win one in a row. It's going to be a great race. Stick with us. We'll start them when we come back. GNCC Racing on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by KTM Sport Motorcycles. And by CD Boots. Welcome back to the Reynolds Dude Ranch, the site of round five of the Grand National Cross Country Championship Series. Now, these are some of the amateur riders versus the pro riders that we will be featuring headed toward the start line. And this one is not too far away. Track facts, Mark? Yes, Loretta Lynn's is one of the longest courses we'll see all year. Also, it turns into one of the toughest tracks we see all year. Really gets whooped out and difficult out there. 12 miles long. They are going to be out there for some three hours. It's going to be a tough race. Let's go to the start line in Jen Hildren. Jimmy Jarrett and Suzuki got a lot of young guys making some noise out here. Jimmy Jarrett, one of those guys, didn't finish last week, had a couple not finishes, a couple good performances. What's it going to take to do well and get some consistency? A uh, good start's always important. Um, top five all day. Be there when uh, after gas in the top five and uh, run with those guys all day. All right, we got another great young guy right next to him. That's number 13, Michael Lafferty. Let's get on over here. All right, Mike, you had, you've led a lot of laps, had some spectacular performances, no wins yet. Going to get a win here today? What's it going to take? Yeah, I'm definitely going to try. I'm um, trying to get off to a good start and uh, be up there first part of the race. And then I think it's important the last part of the race, after we get some gas, to be with everybody. And someone makes a move, starts making a break for it, you got to be there with them. I think it's got to be stronger towards the last last part of the uh, of the race than, uh, than the beginning part. All right, let's go on down the line to Bob Walker. Thanks, Jen. What we have here is the number one end bike of Paul Edmondson, defending champion for the National Hair Scrambles. It's a double event today. It's a GNCC as well as a Hair Scramble event. Paul, you're competing for the National Hair Scramble Championship. You're in second place right now. Yeah, right now I'm in second place, and uh, GNCC Championship's pretty much gone, so it's important for me today with it being a Hair Scramble that I have a good ride. And next to Paul, we have the number one bike of Shane Watts. Shane's leading in the GNCCs as well as the National Hair Scramble. Shane, you got a great line position today. Can you do it again? I can only go out and try my best. I know my KTM is working unreal and, um, you know, things are looking good. It's a great crowd here and I'm, I'm getting pretty fired up. So, you know, I've got the chance of a good result, but a lot of great riders and um, I'll just try my best and hopefully come out with the victory. And we have the guy who has something to say about Shane Watts winning the championship again. He's a two-time champion out here, Rodney Smith. He's in second place right now. Yeah, it's, uh, my Suzuki's working real well, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting up there on that podium here today. And Loretta's is always a good race, and the fans are always rooting on Suzuki here. Well, we'll check out the Kawasaki starting field with Watts, Edmondson, two number ones in there. Blackwell, Hawk, Jarrett, Woodford on down the line. Mark, any predictions on your part? From what I've seen in years past, this is Shane Watts' race course. He's dominated this, not just won this race, but dominated the last two years. We've had other guys, Rodney Smith's won here. Freddie Andrews, he's done extremely well here also. So we'll see how it plays out today. Well, you said, uh, you said Shane Watts, but then followed with a bunch of names. I think it's pretty much a wide open field. Anyone could win this one. Uh, just the slightest mistake in the woods. And uh, my gosh, uh, you could be passed by five, six different guys. It's a fast course, a tough course. The heat might well be a factor today, and they are off. Oh, several riders. Well, there's at least two. I say several, two, three riders. Shane Watts. That's Shane Watts. He was caught in the banners, and I thought I saw Fred Andrews. I did. Fred Andrews, those two guys. Two of the favorites are hung up at the rear of the field. Meanwhile, Mike Lafferty gets the whole shot. Yeah, Michael's out front. And he's got the Jimmy Jarrett, another fast starter, too, the young guys we talked about earlier. But two of the main favorites, Jane Watts and Freddie Andrews, down that first corner, they've got a tough road to come through this field because these guys up front are all extremely fast. They are. So we could be looking. I mean, this is a big deal for Mike Lafferty. He's never won a race. He wants one awfully bad. So that's one consideration. The second thing we're going to be watching is can Andrews, can Watts work through the field? Man, oh man, this is going to be tough. Let's take a look at one more time at this start. Pick something out for me. Yeah, here we've got all these top riders coming in that first corner. Steve Hatch gets in there really tight and really snuffs out that inside line and kind of created a bottleneck. Mike Lafferty well out front. 
Freddie Andrews tried to get around. Michael got on the gas too hard, spun the bike out. Oh boy, Freddie got plowed right there extremely hard. So not only is he dead last, he might be a little hurting after that. And here again from the inside, you can see Michael doing a nice job controlling the inside there. Freddie just got on the gas too hard, went down, and then boy, Randy Hawkins just plows into him. There was nothing Randy could do to avoid Fred. Uh, hopefully Fred will be okay and may be able to make a day of it. I think Mike Lafferty did a good job getting on the gas and taking the rear wheel, or the front wheel rather, out of oh, the Look at that. Look at look Steve Hash did a great job. He was super aggressive on this mud hole, just wheeling right through it. Well, you know, Freddie and uh, Watsy might get through the front of the pack pretty early the way these guys are going through this mud hole. Look at that. If this mud hole is this messy on the first lap, what is it going to be by the time this race is over? What's it going to be like by the time the B and C riders get there? That's what I want to see. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Meanwhile, Steve Hatch burst through the mud out front. He has control of this race. Running in the number two position. Is That's Chucky Woodford. Chucky, good mud rider, made a good, got a good start there. Got through that mud hole nice. We saw Paul Edmondson come through. He was one end. Looking back in the pack for Watts. Rodney, Rodney Smith just went by, so Rodney didn't get that great a start either, so he, I don't know if he'll be able to capitalize on Watsy's mistake right here. He is well back in the pack. Still well, watching the field come through. Here comes Andrews, and here comes Watts. They are still at the end of the pack. Uh, boy, I just do not give them any hope at all, being able to move through this talented field of riders on this course, especially in, in the heat of this particular race. It's extremely hot. It is going to be tough for them. Crossing the road. Yep, the riders have to get off their bikes here and, and walk them across. They were told about it at the riders' meeting, and the sign there tells them that also. So uh, that's going to be something to watch today. Hatch, Woodford, Lafferty, and Jarrett, that's the running order of the Pacer X leaderboard. We'll be back. Welcome back to Loretta Lynn's this GNCC race is barely underway. There's your leader, rider number four, Steve Hatch. Now the bike right behind him was the uh, Moto Cam rider. He's not in the race. He's there to provide some video, which you'll see a little bit later today. There is second place and uh, third place coming through. Jason Rains in fifth place. He's aboard a Yamaha. Rider number seven, we saw Jim Jarrett. And there was Paul Edmondson. Remember that rider on the Moto Cam, the KTM Moto Cam. He has jumped in behind, I think, Steve Hatch, and uh, we'll get a taste of what this wood section is all about. Yeah, Steve has jumped out here to a nice lead. Steve's always been a quick starter and able to floor it. Maybe today with some of the top guys having some problems. Steve, if he can get out here, get relaxed, get comfortable with the course, he can make a break of it and uh, get a nice win here today. Steve has. Uh, turned in some great rides this year but luck has not gone with him always it seems like something happens and Chucky Woodford in second Michael Lafferty in third uh, Brian Garahan in fourth Jason Rains there in fifth Jimmy Jarrett a lot of the young guys up front in this race early well they are here comes uh, Shane Watts look at that what hit the front end of his motorcycle it was something the number plate was missing and there is Fred Andrews in 17th place yeah, those two, they've moved up pretty well so far. Shane's going to have a hard time getting through traffic. He can't flash that high beam at anybody to get around. <laughs> Shane Watts rides a stock motorcycle. When he started, there was a number plate and a headlight attached to it. That is gone, probably wiped out in that crash that he suffered at the start. Meanwhile, Hatch is pulling away from the field. Look at this. Lafferty has moved up to second place. He was the very early leader, but gave that position up as well as a couple more. And uh, Lafferty now making uh, some end roads into this racetrack. Yeah, the guys up front, they need to hustle. There's Rodney Smith. He's well back also. And Shane Watts, boy, he's already caught Rodney. He has. Watts is going fast. Let's go to the pits where Bob Walker has a report. This is the number one play to Shane Watts, and you won't be seeing it on his bike today. That's because he went down in the first turn. Less than 20 minutes into the race, Watts, he's already moved up to the ninth position and is moving fast. Well, thanks, Bob. Meanwhile, the guy that's moving fastest of all at mile marker number 12 is rider number four, Steve Hatch. This guy is pounding, pounding this course. And this is the motocross portion of the racetrack. And Hatch is not the best motocrosser out there, is he, Mark? He's not the best, but he's not uh, not very far off that pace. Steve rides extremely well. 
He's been doing a lot of motocross training because he has Rodney Smith and Mike Kurdowski as teammates, and those two are definitely top-notch motocrossers. So they've given him a pointer or two. So he's learned some lessons, and we do think about uh, Fred Andrews, and we think about Rodney Smith, and even Shane Watts when we think about motocrossers. So I wasn't trying to put Steve down, just implying maybe that there were some guys out there that were just a little bit faster. Now, one of the things that Hatch was doing was looking all around at the course, and I don't think he's doing that. No, he shouldn't. Steve, he's got that great start. He's up there in the clear. He really needs to focus on what he's got. Oh, look, three abreast over jumping to Jim Jarrett, uh, Jason Raines, uh, Brian Garahan. Those guys are really getting after it on the motocross course. Now, this is a battle for third place. Mike Lafferty is uh, just ahead of them. There you see Lafferty, number 13. And look at that gaggle behind him. They're all fighting over third. If I was Michael, I'd try to stay out of that battle because those guys, they're, they're getting kind of loose back there. Now, a little bit of water has been dumped on the course to try to alleviate some of this dust situation. And uh, you can see a little slipping and sliding going around uh, on the part of Steve Hatch. Yeah, the first lap, he needs to be a little cautious. You see him getting a little sideways over some of these jumps. He still wants to maintain a real strong pace, but uh, he has to be careful out there in some of those slippery sections. The motocross track is probably the most exciting part of the race course for most of the fans because they can see it. This is the same track that the amateur national championships are held on every year and uh, have been for a good number of years. Oh, look so at Rodney Smith moving up the inside. We just talked about Rodney not doing so well off the start. He's moved right up there, caught that group of young guys, and he's making quick work on this motocross track. Yeah, well, we also talked about the fact that Rodney Smith is a premier motocrosser. Uh, many years of professional doing that job as they go through the check. And as a matter of fact, he rode the Grand Prix for a couple of years and finished third one year in the World Championships. Through the pits for the first time today, reading the pit sign from Marshall Plum, his mechanic was Steve Hatch, and now the rest of the field slipping and sliding through the rather wet corners of Loretta Lynn's Amateur National Motocross Championship track. And there goes Michael Lafferty, rider number 13. Later today, you'll see them stopping in this pit area for gas. Here is the Racer X running order. Welcome back to GNCC Racing. Mark, let's take a look at our race reset. This Steve Hatch has jumped out to a nice early lead, but what he has to watch out for is the high temperatures today in this brutal course could take his toll, and he might be setting too fast of a pace. On the other hand, Shane Watts and Fred Andrews, they don't have any other choice but to set a fast pace right now and the momentum that they have. Will they be able to carry it in this heat to, to all of uh, the end, to completion? That's what we're gonna have to find out because this is, of course, not only do we have the heat, but just the course. It gets so rough and so technical. It's gonna be difficult for them to maintain this pace because these other guys that have been up front, they're not pushing as hard. They've had time to get drinks, time to pick better lines, be a little bit smoother, not use as much energy. Now, Reigns has uh, caught up to the rear of Lafferty, and I would also point out that Hatch has done nothing but run away from the field. He continues to lengthen his lead over the rest of the field. And, and Mike Lafferty, in particular, running in second. And usually Michael, too, he's a great starter. Being an enduro background, he's good at just charging right out of the gate. And uh, Jason Reigns, he had third at the last race, was second right up to a couple miles from the finish. And uh, I look for Jason to be up there at the end of today. There was Jimmy Jarrett running in uh, the number four position. And uh, there is Shane Watts all the way up to sixth place from dead last. Watts has really been on the gas. Wow, Shane has just poured the coals to it. And But this course, you know, in the two years past, Shane has just dominated this race. Not just won it, but just walked away from these guys. Shane, a former World Enduro champion, and right behind him, Paul Edmondson. Actually, Shane has caught past Edmondson, another world champion. Let's go to the KTM Moto Cam. Oh, we've jumped in behind Stevie here, see what he's up to, see how he got out to that big lead. Well, you can see the tree roots and everything that have developed, because we've also at this track, we had a morning race, so the course is a little chewed up right now. I'll tell you what I can see. I can see trees that the handlebars won't fit through, and I don't know how he's getting to them so fast. Well, that's why Steve's a factory rider, and we're just calling the race, Larry. <laughs> I guess you made a good point. Now, earlier in the day, we talked to the riders and asked them what they thought it would take to win out here today on this very tough course. Just ride real smooth, real smart, flow, and, uh, you know, you, you can only race your track and by yourself, because if you worry about everybody else, they're, they're racing their own race. So I can only concentrate on Steve Hatch and doing the best I can.
biggest thing is to get in with the lead pack, conserve your energy, because this right trace really, it really gets tough and, and really physical. So I think the guy that saves his energy, gets in a good position, and later on day picks a pace up, will we'll win the race. I think still I'm just going to chill out though. I'm just going to get out to the, get out front a little bit, maybe get a good get a good start, and hang out and, and watch uh, watch some lines. It's going to get really rough. It's real rocky here, and it's hard pack. It's going to get really chopped up, and I think it's going to be a physical race. So the the last two laps are going to be real crucial. You know, whoever's up there leading, and uh, you know, to grab grab a hold of those guys, um, stay with them towards the end is going to be pretty important. There's so many rocks. You have a get a bad break and a rock come back and comes back and hits you maybe and, and you know catches you in the hand or something and could could hurt you a little bit and it could maybe uh, take you out towards the end of the race so that that'll be a big a big uh, point of the race well if Mike Lafferty is correct and there he is in second place and it's going to be very physical who does the race then favor well you saw Shane Watts was right behind Michael and with Shane being up that far already uh, he's got to be one of your favorites and Rodney Smith he's a really strong rider smart rider and trains extremely hard so he would be one and Freddie Andrews he's been picking up the pace since he got hurt at Ford every race he's been riding better and better you know what I think about this race there's a lot of if factors connected to it Michael Lafferty through the woods still holding on to second place Lafferty at the last race out was an early leader and he ran out of gas toward the end ran out of steam so could very well be that uh, he's conserving some energy, like you said, in hopes that he'll have some left for the latter part of this race. Yeah, and just there, Shane Watts is around Michael, so maybe Michael, since Shane's on a much faster pace, he's going to jump in behind his uh, KTM teammate and go along for the ride. There's Mike Kudrowski, the first time we have seen him today. He's up in the number eight position and just kind of cooling his wheels back and back. Shane Watts in second place from dead last. He has worked all the way up to second place and is an incredible run to pass the most talented riders in the world, to expend that kind of energy. I, I just, I, I gotta wonder where he's going to go from here. What has he got left? That's just an amazing ride from Shane because these guys, it's not like he's catching some B and C riders. These are the best in the world. Here, Steve Hatch was out to an early lead. And look at Shane, he is right on Steve. Both Shane and uh, Lafferty have closed on Steve, so you are right. Uh, when Shane went around, uh, excuse me, went around Lafferty, he picked up the pace, and here well, we go, him, side around. by side, he makes the pass. He passes Steve Hatch. Boy, Shane is just on a mission here. He had that little 200 wound up and just never backed out of it. Steve thought he was out front, no problem, and boom, Shane just goes by. I am amazed at the ability he has shown us so far in this event, and here comes Fred Andrews. Hey, we'll be back. This one is exciting. Welcome back. This is GNCC Racing. It gets no better than this. You're looking at Shane Watts. No number plate on the front, but a big number one on the side. He's followed by Michael Lafferty, their first and second. Hatch has disappeared from uh, the front running two, at least. Here we go down through that mud hole again. Watts is in it and out of it, and <laughs> no trouble. But here, oh, and Lafferty goes over the bars. Oh, Michael had big visions of passing Shane right there, and uh, just didn't quite get it done. That Michael <laughs> is an enduro rider, folks. He should have handled that mud hole with ease made the pass and been on about his way i think he got just a little bit greedy or a little bit anxious he, he went where no man has ever tread yeah he saw his teammate up there struggling with it and he thought that was his opportunity to get back into the front and as soon as he did boy down he went let's take another look at the pass for the lead yeah shane watts coming into this straightaway had a little more momentum coming into it just uh kept the gas on a little bit longer and just rode right by steve hatch was Steve Hatch surprised because he knew that he had a big lead at one time? Yeah, Shane had to have snuck on, up on him just like he's done to everybody all day because Steve's been out front all day, nobody challenged him, then all of a sudden, boom, Shane was on him. Here's Fred Andrews making his way around the track, and Fred has steadily moved through traffic. He's done it at a more leisurely pace than Shane Watts, and Fred is all the way up to fifth. That might pay off better for Freddie at the end of the day because he seems like he's used a little less energy, maybe he's ridden a little bit smarter here at the beginning of the race than Shane has. Here are first and second place. Shane Watts out front. Number 13 is Michael Lafferty. He's in second. I wonder, as we uh, watch the KTM photo cam, he'll jump in behind uh, one of the riders. I wonder if, uh, and I think that's Mike Kiprowski, if I'm not mistaken. I wonder if something has happened 
to Steve Hatch because he just disappeared from sight. Uh, this is kind of a Steve Hatch pattern. He's always been an extremely quick starter, gets out front, everybody catches back up, and then he kind of regroups and then charges at the end again. Our uh, KTM Moto Camp following Mike Kidrowski, former national motocross champion. Mike retired from motocross, dropped out of competition for a few years, and then all of a sudden, he got back into it and found he, uh, well, he just really liked riding in the woods, riding his motorcycle. He said the pressure isn't quite as intense as it was when he was going for national championships, but it's still there. The competitive juices flow when he has a good time. Yes, and Mike, he should be another guy that's going to do really Mike well Mike Lafferty today. is the leader. Mike Lafferty, excuse me, Mark. That's okay. Mike Lafferty has taken over the front runner's position. Shane Watson second. Rodney Smith up to third. Yeah, uh, the front three, they're doing really good here. Rodney kind of got some spark in his uh, engine there and caught back up with the lead group. He had kind of drifted back there a little bit a few minutes ago. And we broke into the tight woods for Lafferty. That would certainly be an advantage. Is that the reason he took the lead? Yes, the tight woods is where Michael really excels out. Boy, there's Freddie Andrews. He's all the way up to fourth place already. And we had a look at Steve Hatch, who has dropped back to sixth place in the standing so obviously something has gone just a little bit awry maybe a run off on the course who knows there goes fred andrews the riders are uh, working through the wood section they look relaxed but believe me relaxation is not the name of the game out here ninth place is range hawk follows some of the pit crews standing by in the woods to encourage their riders and let them know exactly how they're doing and more than that they want to know for sure did my guy get through <laughs> andrews now up to fourth yes and back in the early 80s freddie andrews lost to amateur national motocross championship to jeff jeff stanton out on the motocross track here at loretta's stanton of course going on to be a pro motocrosser and win many pro titles well here's michael lafferty still up front getting around the lappers quite nicely Dane Watts still running in second. There was Andrews running in fourth. This has the makings of the proverbial barn burner. We've got so many guys up front. They swap positions back and forth. The competition is so intense. The track is so rough. You just you just wait. What is going to happen next? Well, you see starting the lap riders are starting to get mixed in here. In the last couple races, races we've had, the top guys are just going to town. Boy, are they ever. I can't wait to see how this one is going to round off. But before we get to that, let's go to our CD Foods Thrill Seeker shot of the day. Now, it concerns a rider that is uh, coming down a hill. It's a little out of control. Uh, Mark, maybe you can comment on our KTM photo cam rider. Well, you know, sometimes things happen. He's trying to do his best to get out of everybody's way, and he just took one for the team there. <laughs> he took one on the chin, took one in the chin, and took one on the ground. That was our CD Boots Thrill Seeker shot of the day. <laughs> There's, that's what it looked like from his camera. Hey, you know, he's probably trying to give the viewers at home what it's really like to be out there. Anybody can ride like these pro guys. Those amateur guys are the ones that have the troubles. <laughs> Meanwhile, Michael Lafferty circulates the motocross track. He is out front for, uh, well, a second time today. He led once early on, was passed by Hatch, and uh, actually that was passed by Shane Watts, and took over the number one position, leaving Watts back in second after a spill and coming from the, well, last place. Yeah, but here's totally the, well, here's the battle I really want to see. Rodney Smith, Shane Watts, they're the, defending champion the guy that lost the championship and they're the only guys to win races so far this year so this is shaping up nicely today good point they have each won twice yes and like shane said early in the year he felt he was the only rider that could be on the podium every race so far he has rodney's won two races but he's been sixth at the other two races rodney is just dogging the rear wheel of shane watts look at this he goes to the inside Shane blocks him they come out over this little jump almost side by side but Shane Watts had the good line. Now Smith will try on the outside. He'll take it wide, sweeps through that corner, gains no ground, but had a lot of momentum coming out. Not able to make the pass. Watts is doing a heck of a job holding the former pro motocrosser at bay. Yeah, Shane and Rodney, they're really mixing it up back there. And while they're doing that, they're kind of holding each other up. And Mike Lafferty, he's just enjoying the view out front. <laughs> They are holding each other up, and Mike, of course, has an unobstructed track if he's making the most of it. Hey, take a look at the Racer X leaderboard when we come back on Fox Sports Net. More GNCC Racing.
Welcome back on Fox Sports Net. You are watching the GNCC Series. The first pit stops of the day. That's the leader, Michael Lafferty, into the pits. Rider number 13. Behind him in second is Shane Watson. Watts got off his motorcycle. Then we have Freddie Anders coming into the pits. When the guys are running this close together, it puts a lot of pressure on the pit crew. You've only got five or ten seconds worth of work, and those guys are just jitterbugs. They really got to get these guys in and out in a hurry. They generally change goggles, pour in gas, sometimes dump water down their neck, take on new gloves, but I have not seen... See, he's still not on his bike. Shane Watts got off his motorcycle and walked toward the truck. Now, they're refueling it, but Watts is nowhere in sight. I wonder if maybe... You know, his headlights missing. I wonder if there was some more stuff that went on in that crash that we don't know about. And he could be, uh, yep, uh, he could be doing some emergency repair work. No, there's, I don't understand this at all. Watch is uh, just sitting. He found a place in the shade. Could be that he just expended too much energy in the first part of that race in the heat. Hey, Steve Hatch is out front of Mike Lafferty. Hatch is back in the lead. Lafferty second, Fred Andrews third. Yes, after Steve ran out of gas in Georgia, he pitted on the second lap, so when all these guys pitted on the third lap, it got Steve back in front of the pack. Great strategy on the part of the Suzuki factory rider as he takes over the front runner's position. So Hatch is back out front. He pitted on lap two. That's why he dropped back to six. Let's go to Bob Walker. Walker is in the pits, and he has caught up with Shane Watts, our early leader. Shane Watts, what happened out there? Nothing happened. That's the thing. I, my heart's not in it, so I'm just not enjoying it. And I love to be out there riding around for like, yeah, I ride for the fun and I don't know. I got to sort some issues out with myself. Things that just aren't right. I know that's all I can say is just my heart's not in it. Sorry. Well, Shane Watts, obviously with some personal problems to deal with. That's what he told us. And Paul Edmondson is pulling into the pits. Edmondson apparently out of the race. Man, it's a rough day for the world champions today. Boy, you saw him when he got off the bike there. He's kind of grabbing his left shoulder. If you recall back at Florida, the first race of the year, he had a shoulder problem, and that was Bob and then, and I believe that was his right shoulder. Now he looks like uh, he's having problems with his left shoulder, Larry. Oh, look at that face. Definitely, he's in some pain. Maybe a collarbone. Yeah, the, the left shoulder, shoulder was hanging down a little bit, uh, but Steve, he's not going to worry about that. He's here to win the race, and he's charging hard again. Steve Hatch is out front. Michael Lafferty second, Fred Andrews third. Let's put a wrapper on that Shane Watts thing as they go through the woods. If he indeed is having those personal problems that would affect his riding, then you do not want to be in the woods at the speed in which they ride. Yeah, but he needs to think about the championship, and, and I just can't believe he pulled out of this race. Even if you're not 100%, he could still get out there at the speed he's able to go and get a top 10 ride. And with counting every race this year, every point counts. And, you know, you hate to talk about this early in the season, but when you do something like this, it usually comes back to haunt you. The KTM Moto Cam. We're going to jump in behind. Who is it? Oh, that's Mike Kardowski right there. This should be a really good track for Michael today. Uh, it's a sort of a faster track, but it's very physical with the heat we have today. And Michael, he's always been known as a real strong trainer. So this should, even though we're in the woods, they're fast woods, it should suit Mike pretty good today. Well, he's looking pretty good right now. Meanwhile, in the pits, Jen Hildred has caught up with Paul Edmondson. Let's go for her report. Kawasaki's Paul Edmondson having one of the best races uh, so far this year. Struggled with some shoulder problems early. Looks like uh, you hurt the other shoulder today. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I can't believe what's happening. You know, I was out front there and uh, running quite comfortable up front. Uh, just tangled with a lap rider, and we both went end over end, and I landed on the other shoulder this time. What are you, uh, any idea right now? I mean, how much pain are you in? Um, well, to be honest, it just feels exactly the same as the other one did. So, um, to me, it feels like an AC separation. Uh, the shoulder didn't pop out, but it's definitely hurting right now, and it's not getting any better. I will certainly hope to hear the best news for Paul Edmondson and uh, Team Green. Well, we started the day with a pair of world champions in the race, and both of them are out. Looks like Steve Hatch is getting ready to pit. That's his mechanic, Marshall Plum, and uh, he certainly is uh, ready for that to happen. Let's see if it does. Down at the other end. Uh, yep. 
Hatch is going to pit, and also I think Mike Lafferty pulled in to pit. Extreme. Oh, Lafferty, there goes Lafferty. Did he get gas? No, Michael did. Uh, Steve was one of the few riders that stopped at the end of two laps, so this is uh, the end of four laps. He had to stop again. Why? Oh, we have Jason Raines also in the pit, so he must have gas on lap two and four. So when they exited the pits, I believe that uh, Fred Andrews was actually in the lead. Lafferty running second, and that would put Hatch maybe in third place if he was able to maintain that position. Boy, Freddie, that's, I don't know, there's Rodney Smith right behind uh, Steve Hatch, Mike Lafferty. He passed Steve, so somewhere between the pits and here, Steve got back around Michael. And Freddie, he's having a really strong ride today. As you recall, he was one of the last guys to leave the starting line down there after that first turn pileup. He and Watts were at the tail end of the pack, but Fred took his time working through the pack. He didn't expend nearly as much energy as Watts did, who tried to get it all done inside of one lap. That could be the difference. Here's that mud hole. Ha. Do it, do it, do it. No one's having trouble. Do it. Everyone's making it through the mud. Wow, look at that. Well, I, I know you as a rider don't like this stuff, but me as a spectator, I love it. Oh, and Jason Reigns. Oh, Jason's having a little bit of a trouble there. And up front with Freddie, too, is Rodney Smith. Rodney didn't have the best of starts. So all the guys that were kind of back early, they're in the front now. And as you recall, two weeks ago, Freddie led the race till the last lap and made a mistake and let Rodney get, Rodney get the win. So uh, we'll see if he can change that up. Here's the Racer X leaderboard. It is tight up front. Hey, welcome back. It's time for a race reset, Mark. Well, oh, Freddie's up front. Rodney's gained big points, but look at the guys who are out. Shane Watts, Chucky Woodford, Randy Hawkins, Paul Edmondson. Who's going to be left to win this thing? That is the question. Who will survive? Right now, my hero is Fred Andrews. This guy has flat been on the gas since uh, falling down in the first corner of the first lap. He's worked his way through. Here he is into the pits. Final uh -oh. time today for gas. Larry, they, they got Rodney Smith coming into pits. And... Mike Lafferty's getting a drink and getting around him. Steve Hatch is getting around Rodney. Well, you know, this goes back to the Georgia race when Steve Hatch ran out of gas. The Suzuki guys still don't know how far they can go on a tank, but with Shane Watts being out, they didn't want to chance Rodney running out of gas, so they, they probably did the smart thing there, bringing him in for gas. And Kidrowski also getting gas. Now, it cost Rodney Smith two positions on the racetrack. I don't know what it cost Kidrowski. I believe Kudrowski was in fifth. I know it was in fifth, but I think Jason Reigns may have made the pass while he was gassing. Yeah, so that also dropped him back two positions. He's in sixth, but the real action is up front. We've got a big battle here. Freddie's got a, a nice little cushion since Rodney took on some gas, so we'll see if he can go the whole race and to the finish unlike last time. Here's a replay of Reigns and his crash. Yeah, Jason got going through that mud hole, and it's, you see that big tree there? It had some tree roots going out from underneath of it, and that, they were covered up underneath the water there, and Jason got to the end of that, hit that big tree root, and it threw him on the ground. Tough for the riders, great for the spectators, and I'm not laughing at you, Jason, but we who cannot do what you can do love to see things like that. Oh, and Rodney Smith already got around these uh, Steve Hatch and Mike Lafferty. He's on second right behind Freddie, so this is just like two weeks ago. We'll see if... Rodney can apply the pressure and force Freddie Freddy into another mistake. Mark, they have opened up a considerable gap over Steve Hatch, who's running in third, and the rest of the field. In fact, Michael Lafferty has dropped way back. I didn't even see him come through in that last time. Yeah, what we got going on now, Larry, is the guys who want this race the most and who are in the best shape. On board with a KTM Moto Cam, just a couple of miles from the finish. We'll follow them in from this point as they cross the road. That's where you have to get off your motorcycle, walk it across, then get back on it. We're behind Rodney Smith, who is in second place. Question, can Rodney catch Freddie? Freddie's got just a little bit of a gap here, and with uh, Freddie's motocross skills being probably every bit of what Rodney's are, Rodney had to be right on him at this point, and it's going to be tough for Rodney to, to get to Freddie. He hope, has to ride really hard, maybe hope for a little mistake or a lapped rider to get right close on him. Well, our moto, cost, our moto cam rather, is hanging tough, but there's the gap right there. And uh, looks to me like it's pretty much history. I don't think anyone's going to catch Fred. Yeah, Freddie's just ride really good. And to come from as far back as he did, this is just a really impressive ride today. He's probably thinking about that title he lost to Jeff Stanton about 15 years ago. He <laughs> wants to make a few amends. I'll bet he's not. I'll <laughs> bet he's just thinking, wow, where is... Uh, he could be thinking one of two things. Wow, 
where is the finish? I'm dying. Or, hey, look what I did today from last to first. He has really turned in a spectacular ride. Yeah, and he's probably happy, too. There's no bridge crossings between here and the finish. <laughs> Another good point. Fred Andrews, rider number three. Just to recap quickly for you, he fell in the first corner of the first lap, worked his way through the pack to gain the front runner's position, and now is well on his way to his first win of the season in round five of the GNCC series. Their second place, Rodney Smith. Rodney has not given up, but I think he knows in the back of his mind he would need just a little bit of help if he were going to catch Fred between now and the finish. And Freddie, he's such a veteran rider, just a really smart, cagey veteran. He's not going to let Rodney have two in a row. So, uh, yeah, this is Freddie's day, man. Rode a great race. Nice little wheelie for the gang. <laughs> he still has enough energy for that. And there's Rodney crossing the finish line in second. This puts Rodney right back in the points chase, just a, like a point or two behind uh, Shane Watts. And there is uh, Steve Hatch. He'll come home in third. I, my hat goes off to all of these guys. It was so hot today, so buggy. And the fact that they were able to pound this racetrack, giving it all they had for as long as they did, uh, it, it's just a fantastic race. Hey, when we come back, we'll hear from the winners. GNCC Racing on Fox Sports Net has been brought to you by KTM Sport Motorcycle and by CD Boots. Welcome back. Round five is history. This does not look good. That is Michael Lafferty's bike that Alan Brandt and uh, his wife Melissa are riding back into the pit area. Evidently, uh, Michael having some kind of problem out in the woods. We don't know where he is. Meanwhile, Fred Andrews is taking his helmet off, and he'll talk with Bob Walker. Freddie Andrews, hot, hot weather out there, brutal track. How were those conditions? You know, the track was really brutal, and everybody out there rode a heck of a race that finished today. I rode my heart out. My Dunlop Kawasaki worked awesome. I just kept on, fell on the first turn, just kept on pushing and pushing, and you know, I got cheated out of wins the last couple of weeks and gave it my all today and came out on top. Did you ever think you'd find yourself here in the number one spot after that first turn crash? Well, when I fell down and Shane Watts was there, I knew I had hope, because he's come from behind and won, so if he can do it, I can do it. Okay, let's go to Jen with our runner-up finisher, Rodney Smith. Rodney Smith finishing in second place. Tough race out there today. Tell us about the finish and uh, just getting to where you were in the pack. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great finish. Freddie rode really well. My, my FMF Suzuki, you know, was running real good. And with a lap to go, I, I stopped for a little splash of gas, and that dropped me back to fourth, and I had to pass two guys to catch up to Freddie. And uh, I caught up to him, but, you know, he was riding really well, and there was nowhere to get by him. And uh, my Suzuki was working good, and the whole team was working good. I see another Suzuki there in third, and I'm very happy. And very happy you should be, Rod. It was an outstanding ride to finish in second. Hatch third. Uh, Jason Rains fourth. Second ride in a row that was good for him. He finished third just a race ago. And fourth this week. Mike Lafferty finishing in the number 15 position. How tough was this race tag? Just check the factory riders that are well back in the pack. Meanwhile, we'll go to the pits and hear from Steve Hatch. Well, I just had a, uh, I had a great start, kind of checked out the first lap and uh, made a few mistakes. Car wheeled once and uh, those guys got up behind me on the second lap and then Watts got by me and I was trying to push it and uh, crashed again, got stuck in between my rear wheel and the bike and uh, went back to about six and then just kept plugging along. I noticed that Freddie and uh, Paul were just kind of cruising. So kind of took it easy, you know, kind of got ready for the last few laps and uh, grabbed a few gears and had some fun and my FMF Suzuki worked great. Here are the point standings, and it is a whole new championship battle. Smith moves within one point of Shane Watts. I'd have to ask you, Mark, did Steve Hatch say he got caught between his tire and his bike? He did say that, and if you want to know how tough today's race was, just look at Mike Lafferty. He is spent. He was made it to within four miles of the finish, overheated, and just uh, was a brutal race course out there today. Shame for Mike Lafferty. It cost him a good, strong finish in this round of the NCC Series. For Bob Walker and Jen Hildreth in the pits, and for my sidekick up here in the booth, Mark Hyde, I'm Larry Myers. We'll see you next time at the next GNCC race.